There's a very weird thing that people are now talking about online. It's something that they call incels. What in the world are incels and why do they matter? Incels are involuntary celibates. Okay, in other words, people who want to have sex but are not, right? Which is to say, most of the population, I assume, right? But incels are involuntary celibates. The reason that they have become a thing is because last week, a couple of weeks ago, there's a 25-year-old Canadian killer who rammed his van into a crowd of people killing 10 and injuring 15, and the killer had written a Facebook post stating that the incel rebellion has already begun, and all the Chads and Stacys, which I guess is some sort of slang for attractive people, would pay the price. So there have been a bunch of think pieces about how to solve the problem of involuntary celibacy. Point number one, I don't understand why involuntary celibacy is a problem. If you haven't earned the, if you haven't earned somebody's love and affection enough for them to have sex with you, I don't understand why this is society's problem. But it just demonstrates that the victimhood mentality has taken over everyone in our society. You're a loser and you can't find somebody to marry you? Maybe it's because you ought to get your act together. Okay, maybe the reason you're involuntarily celibate is because you have not made enough of yourself to earn somebody else's love and affection. But when you live in a society where sex is believed to be owed, when you live in a society that's constantly promising that, you, that sex is right around the corner. Casual sex is easy to get. It's not a problem. No one's ever gonna require anything of you. Right? When you watch TV and everybody is jumping in and out of the sack with everybody else, it does lead to a mentality that suggests I am owed this thing, right? I am owed sex. Everyone's getting it except for me. Involuntary celibacy is obviously a societal problem. But this is a very perverse view of sexuality. Ross Dowd had at the New York Times has pointed out that for purposes of discussion, there are two types of incels. Okay, men who can't get sex as a general rule, it's usually men who are worried about involuntary celibacy, and people perceived by the left wing to be victimized by a society that has unfair standards of sexiness. So this would be people who are trans, who say that they can't have sex with the kind of people that they wanna have sex with, because as trans people, society has set up rigid standards of sexuality, and people are falling prey to all of that. Well, Dowd Hat suggests that the solution posed by those who see involuntary celibacy as a problem to be solved will be the redistribution of sex that in the end, what we will end up doing is sponsoring people so that they can hire prostitutes or we can develop new technology like sex robots so we can have a quality of sex. You know, in the Bernie Sanders model, the top 1% of the 1% are having 99% of the sex and we must redistribute the sex as well as the pudding. Right? This is the, the sort of move that Dowd Hat sees coming with regard to involuntary celibacy. Now, we all rightly rebel at this idea because this idea is gross and stupid. It's not your responsibility to make sure that anybody else has sex, obviously nor is it your responsibility to have sex with somebody just because they would like to have sex with you. This is idiotic. But the reason this has even become an issue, the reason there are now all these think pieces, a lot of think pieces in the last week, about involuntary celibates and how we solve their problems is because of this stupid victimization mentality with regard to sex. So I was what you would call a voluntary celibate, okay, until I was married. I was somebody who did not have sex until I was married. My wife had the same standard. The reason for that is because I felt that sex was an adjunct to commitment. Sex was something that you earned as an element of commitment. I earned the love of my wife. I earned the commitment of my wife. She earned my commitment. And then we are willing and happy to have lots of fantastic sex, right? That is the way that society used to work, is that celibacy was not considered some sort of terrible thing to be experiencing. It was, in, it was something that was supposed to encourage you to better yourself and make yourself worthy of marriage, right? Conservatives have had the solution for a long time. A sexual morality that takes into account commitment. If we measure happiness by commitment rather than by amount and variety of sex, then the onus placed on us is to get someone else to commit to us. And we have a society right now that values sex above commitment, that says that the happiest possible life is the one where you're having the sex with the most people in the most positions, and that's what's going to make you the happiest. That's a lie, number one. Social science demonstrates that this is a lie. Pr promiscuity does not lead to happiness, it turns out. Sexual variety does not lead to happiness. Commitment tends to lead to happiness. But we're a commitment-phobic society and a sex-centric society, and that leads to an unhealthy focus on sex, and it leads to us seeing people who are not receiving this free and plentiful sex as victims of the society, as opposed to people who need to better themselves and therefore to earn commitment. Again, virginity should not be seen as something to be condemned. It's seen as a norm, not as a shortcoming, until you have earned somebody else's commitment. But that's not the way our society has viewed it. If sex is the goal of life, then we're going to fall directly into this trap about redistribution of sex and, in, and voluntary celibates being victims. Again, the reality is nobody owes you sex. Nobody owes you anything. Okay, you need to earn. Okay, and when I say you need to earn, I don't mean you got to be a you got to be a, a guy who plays the game. You got to be a stud. Uh, that's not what I mean. What I mean is that if you actually want to have a happy life, what you need to do is make yourself worthy of the person with whom you would like to have sex. And that person needs to make themselves worthy of you as well. It means bettering yourself. 
every way, physically, emotionally, spiritually, become a better person. And it's really interesting. You, know, you rarely see, the, the guys who are complaining right now about involuntary celibacy, they're never complaining about involuntary, uh, involuntary lack of commitment. Right? They, they, you never see these, the same guys who are talking about how they're not getting enough sex, just random sex. You never see them talking about, you know, I've really been trying to get married for a really long time and I've been unable to find women who are willing to marry me. Okay, that number is much, much smaller than the number of guys who are out there complaining about not getting the supposedly free and plentiful sex offered by, by society. Okay, well, we're making a generation of pathetic men. That's, that's all that's happening here. We're creating a generation of pathetic humans, um, men in particular, who think that they are owed things instead of having to actually be gentlemen, be strong defenders of family, be prepared to sustain a household, in order to participate in lovemaking activity. Meanwhile, speaking of people who are being made pathetic, it's not just exclusive to men, it's also happening to women. The lead at the Huffington Post right now, literally the lead, okay, the top of their enormous website is Wet Dreams, the Age of Fish Sex. I am not kidding you. And then it is a picture of a woman's feet and a fish, okay? And here is the story, okay? Time for the easiest game, this is by Claire Fallon, who I have no clue who she is, all I know is she has the lead at Huffington Post and she's crazy. So here is, what she, here is what she writes. She writes, time for the easiest game of, if you love this movie, read this book ever. If you love The Shape of Water, a movie about fish sex, you should definitely read The Pisces by Melissa Broder, a book about fish sex. The cover literally shows a woman in an amorous clench with a fish. The novel actually tells the story of a woman who has a torrid love affair with a merman. And then she says, both the, the, the Pisces and Guillermo del Toro's Oscar-winning Shape of Water seem to have arrived at an inflection point for heterosexual relations as some straight women have thrown up their hands in despair at the prospect of dealing with straight men. These men who grope us and talk down to us and consistently fail to clean the bathroom. We're supposed to make lives with them? Let them touch us? No, you're not. You're supposed to find a good man and settle down with him. That was the idea. You shouldn't be having sex with fish, ladies. Okay, that's it turns out that going after the bass, right, nailing the salmon, that's not actually a good solution to you lacking the ability to find a man who is willing to commit. Okay, the, 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 uh, again, how about women focus on bettering themselves and men focus on bettering themselves and both of, the, both of these things lead toward commitment? Women woke up one day, says the Huffington Post, to find that their husbands voted for Donald Trump and their sons have been bleep posting on incel boards. Okay, just because your husband voted for Donald Trump doesn't mean that he's a bad human being. Again, this is so insane. Even, so basically, you're going to opt to to go after the, the white fish instead of, in, instead of sleeping with your husband because he voted for Trump? Even before we heard the claims about Harvey Weinstein's history of sexual harassment and assault and the ensuing avalanche of horrifying Me Too allegations, we heard about our president grabbing women by the bleep, Bill Cosby feeding women roofies, and R. Kelly allegedly sexually exploiting young girls. So many straight men we have been forced to accept are bad, for, are bad to us and for us. Why would we take the enormous risk of loving one of them? And yet straight women do have desires. Cutting men out of our lives isn't a simple proposition. And it's satisfying as the concept of going lissus stratus until men get their house in order might be, that strategy also requires straight women to deny their sexual urges. The handsome prince of our imagination has been exposed as a dangerous fraud, but we still need some form of romantic hope and sexual release. One seductive yet impossible fantasy might be the romantic attention of a man who lacks the exhausting baggage of male entitlement. To find such fantastical being women, at least in fiction, have turned to the sea. Okay, maybe the emasculation of men is leading men to become pathetic, and maybe men's expectation of sex without relation to commitment is making men pathetic, and it's making women pathetic, and it's making everybody pathetic. And maybe instead of, instead of turning men into something they are not, which both men and women are doing, we should acknowledge that masculine behavior is a useful and necessary component of life. Instead of emasculating men, you should expect men to be better, and men should expect themselves to be better. Women set the standard for men, and men set the standard for women. Okay, this is just the reality in human relations. Maybe that's not the way it should be. That's the way it is. When it comes to sexual relations, if you want to have sex with somebody of the opposite sex, you are setting your standards. That's just the way that it works. What that means is that women should expect men to be better. They should expect men to be better, but they should not expect men not to be men. Okay, men are creatures who are going to want sex. But you can also dictate to a man, ladies, what kind of man you would like to have sex with. Hey, it's up to you to determine what type of person you think is going to make a good husband. And suggesting that all men are R. Kelly or Donald Trump, or that if they voted for Donald Trump, they are Donald Trump, or that if they disagree with you about feminization of, of, of boys, that somehow they're going to be bad husbands, 
we're leading generations of men and women to be unhappy. That's all that's happening here. You have unhappy men who believe that the expectation of life is that they're going to have as much sex as they want, and unhappy women who are living in the expectation that men are going to be under their boot heel and not act like men at any point in real life. Okay, that's just stupid. It's just stupid. And that's how you end up with fish sex on the front page of the Huffington Post and incels killing people in Canada. Just ridiculous.